Great. So I have my presentation now. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to tell you about is, well, you can read it also, but uh, custom Debian distributions and uh, derivatives from Debian. And uh, I'm Igaris Machinos. Yeah, that's. Uh, first, as always, we can start by definitions. And uh, for, for, for the purposes of this talk, uh, I would define what a distribution basically is. And uh, it's basically kernel and uh, some software to accompany the kernel. And uh, it is made in, a, uh, in some format with uh, some uh, defaults and uh, something uh, made by adjusting the configuration. Uh, as uh, it was mentioned pre previously, some services or some community uh, is also part of the package of the distribution. What is a derived distribution? Well, it's a, a, another distribution that's made uh, out of the base distribution. Uh, it's probably changed a bit because someone didn't like something in the base distribution. And uh, what is a, a custom distribution? That's kind of a new thing. Uh, it's uh, a toolkit uh, that allows someone to create uh, a derived distribution without actually deriving from the base distribution, just defining what changes does he want to make. Uh, we'll see that a bit later in the detail, how it works. Uh, many distributions uh, have been uh, the mothers of other distributions. And here we have uh, the basic family tree of Linux distributions. Uh, we have the Red Hat branch with the uh, Mandrake, SUSE, Fedora based off the Red Hat. There are around 50 distributions that are based off the Red Hat. We have the Debian branch with uh, around 150 distributions based off that. We have Slackware with 30 distributions of it, and some other uh, smaller mother distributions with five to 10 uh, derived distributions from, like Gentoo, Linux from scratch, and also there are distributions that are made from scratch, like Linux from scratch, but the other way, uh, and they are independent. So the question basically is why so many distributions have been derived from Debian? Why is it so good to derive from Debian? Well, one thing is we have strict policy. We have very high packaging standards. Uh, we basically have a definition of what we think is a good package. What we think is a nicely packaged software and we see that this definition is upheld. If uh, some package does not fit uh, uh -huh. sleeper. Okay. Uh, I'll be pressing this rapidly now. <laughs> uh, if we <laughs> it doesn't help, right? So I must press it more than once per second, right? <laughs> Okay, I think the video video team is working on something there, but okay, I'll continue that. Uh, if if a package does not conform to our policy, uh, a serious bug is uh, filed against it by someone who uh, who cares about it. Of course, many do. Uh, we have a gigantic number of packaged programs. Uh, it was like uh, over 15,000 uh, when I was uh, last looking at it, but it grows every day. We have very small and very simple base system that uh, every custom distribution can build upon. And as you know, uh, the simpler is the thing you are building upon, uh, the more simple it is to build upon. Uh, some time ago, a couple of releases back, uh, the base of Debian was just uh, an archive that you simply unpacked and you got your basic system. 
it's done. Uh, now it's a bit more complicated, but uh, it's still the same easy, easy, easiest uh, of use uh, as before, but more flexible. And that is the next point. We have very flexible installation infrastructure. Uh, the Debian installer, the key point of uh, this current uh, uh, <coughs> Woody release of Debian, that happened just search. Oh, right. <laughs> Whatever, uh, <laughs> the stable uh, is that uh, it has a Debian installer, which is uh, an extremely flexible tool uh, of its, for installing uh, an operating system. You can uh, make uh, modules from, for it that uh, could do anything to the system you want uh, to create in the end. You can create a custom uh, CD to uh, run your modified installer off, and that will be a derived distribution then. Uh, one other point that some people consider disadvantage of Debian, and I think uh, that could be a, an advantage here, we have a very long release cycles. And that means we have a very stable base to build upon. Some people don't want to uh, remake their uh, derived distribution every four to five months as a new Fedora version comes out. I don't know why. They just don't want to. You don't have to with Debian. You, you can wait for two or three years without doing, doing anything major. Uh, but of course, you can, you can do more. Always, you can do more. And uh, one very, very important point is that Debian is non-commercial. And uh, that brings some, uh, some uh, more uh, aspects to it. First of all, uh, users of your derived distribution uh, can usually uh, get some support of Debian channels, Debian RC, Debian mailing lists, if you're not deriving too broadly off, of course. Uh, Debian is not uh, a, a contestant for you, it's not a concurrent for you. Uh, you don't, ne don't need to compete with Debian. There's no uh, Debian uh, sales task force that will be mad at you for s uh, selling too much of your de uh, uh, derived distribution. We don't care. We will be, we'll be happy for you, actually. And uh, one other thing, that is, there is a lot of freelance experts that are Debian developers. And you can hire them. You can get the best expertise you, uh, you want on, on the Debian, and you can hire it into your company. Get the best experts. So that's, that's why there are lots of them. And one of, the, uh, one of the, well, I think one of the first and one of the loudest Debian derivatives is Knopix, made by Klaus Knopper from Germany. And, uh, the innovative thing was that that was a live CD. That was the thing that has never been seen before, uh, an operating system running directly off the compact disks without touching any hard drive and uh, living in the, in the memory. Very strange. And uh, that's why uh, it has spawned basically hundreds and hundreds of derivatives, uh, including some derivatives that are not based on Debian. They are now SUSE live CDs. They are now uh, Slackware live CDs. And they are now even live CDs based on other operating systems. I've actually seen one uh, based on Windows. It's crappy, but, <laughs> <laughs> but well, <sighs> it works sometimes. <laughs> Uh, what what Knopix uh, uh, can be told of? Well, it's the best best way to to try uh, Linux and a free software environment without actually installing anything, without changing your anything on your computer. Uh, as it doesn't depend on anything that is on your computer, it's the best system recovery tool. You can always boot Knopix regardless of uh, if you just reformatted your hard drive accidentally. And uh, it is a stable environment wherever you go. 
I've seen some people that uh, cannot afford a notebook, but they have made uh, a version of Knopix for them, and they have a, a, 15, a $15 USB key. So they put the USB key in, put the uh, CD with Knopix in, they boot from the CD, and they have all their programs, they have all their settings loaded from the USB key, and they can start working on any computer and in a matter of a couple of minutes. Ubuntu is one other very, very, very uh, prominent now uh, Debian derivative. We, you can actually, uh, as uh, you've been told before, get some of it there. Uh, it has been uh, founded by Mark Shuttleworth, uh, I think a multi-billionaire. Uh, who can count that? Uh, with the idea of uh, giving the humanity to others, that's basically what the word Ubuntu means uh, in some African language. I don't know which one, but whatever. Uh, uh, and he uh, gives work, he employs more than 40 uh, Debian developers <coughs> uh, to create a distribution that would be uh, usable by a common man, basically by him uh, uh, for starts, uh, and then by everybody else too. Uh, they have a fixed release cycle. Sometimes it's good, but sometimes it could be bad, but uh, they've decided to release every six months. And uh, they have developed a lot of interesting features uh, mm, that are basing on, on the Debian infrastructure, but uh, that have, uh, they have built upon it. Uh, and the, uh, now they are starting to contributed back uh, back to Debian, and uh, we're seeing that uh, this collaboration between uh, the derivative distribution and the base distribution is going on quite well. And what, what I see about Ubuntu, uh, it is very frequently now advertised as the first distribution for a newbie to, uh, to try. It's something that you can just uh, give uh, to a new Linux user. Here, take it, try it, whatever, go away. Uh, <laughs> come back when you, when you have problems. They usually don't come back because they don't have problems. Well, <laughs> that's the beauty of it. Uh, there are a hell of a lot of distributions that are specialized uh, uh, for, for a certain area, for a certain country, or even for a certain city, like Vienux, the city uh, for the city of Vienna administration, uh, Linux for for the Spanish. Uh, I'll not try to pronounce. Uh, Extremadura uh, region, uh, Arabics for the Arabian languages, uh, Catex uh, for Czechs. Uh, and uh, least Linux fro from uh, uh, from uh, Latvian school uh, dis distribution. Basically, there are hundreds of them, but uh, nobody knows about most of them because they are only known in the in the city in the region where they are specialized in. Uh, if there is a, such a distribution in your area, then probably it's uh, one of the best to, tr to try because, uh, well, it will be adjusted to your language, uh, it will be adjusted to your time zone, and uh, it will have uh, quite a lot of users and developers locally that you can contact and uh, try to get sup support from. One other thing that's very interesting, it's uh, a lot of special purpose distributions have been popping up. For example, uh, the big example actually, the school Linux, uh, the distribution for schools that has uh, now actually become a, a custom Debian distribution has been uh, integrated back into Debian in some sort uh, and has uh, provided uh, a lot of help in uh, developing the Debian installer. Uh, I think that's uh, the m uh, uh, the most prominent, the best example of uh, contributing back to the, uh, to the base distribution that I've seen uh, at, this, at this point. Uh, 
There's also some other uh, educational uh, distributions like Free C CD, uh, Seoul, and uh, basically lots of them because schools like Linux. Uh, scientists like Linux, and that's why there are scientific distributions like Bionix for biology research, GeoLibre for research on cartography, mapping. Uh, of course, hobbyists like Linux, and that's why there are distributions for the, their specific needs, like Agnula for people that are working with sound. Uh, they have some very special needs, and that's why they make a special distribution that is fitted to their needs. Uh, Hamix uh, uh, for the uh, amateur radio operators. Uh, some people uh, see that general distributions are not uh, fit for them in a security sense. Like, for example, they have network cards enabled, uh, or like they uh, have some other services enabled, actually, or that they actually uh, let people to get access to the system at all. And uh, that's why they make a special distributions with uh, higher security levels. Uh, that uh, are to be used uh, in uh, um, extremely secure environments uh, like uh, military environments and uh, super secret servers or whatever. And uh, Adamantix is one of the examples there. Uh, if you want a server but uh, you don't want to read uh, manuals for all the services you want to have installed, Oh, well, there are server-oriented um, distributions that you can pop in a CD and have a server with several dozens of services uh, configured coming out of it. Uh, you can actually uh, do similar things with uh, uh, some other special purpose distributions. For example, uh, Skull Linux has a uh, uh, mode for installing server, and you get a lot of services configured that way. Uh, that uh, server could be used not only in school but in some other environments. Uh, but that's, that, that's, that's what all special purpose distribution is all about, making, uh, making the defaults uh, differently adapted to a special purpose. So if there is a special purpose, uh, any special purpose, uh, there can be a distribution made for that purpose. Some distributions are made uh, to serve as a commercial base, to serve as a stable base, a controlled base, uh, that you can provide services off, or that you can uh, further mod modify to adjust to needs of your client. Uh, and uh, well, we see Ubuntu here. Uh, we see Progeny that uh, making, making uh, custom, uh, custom distributions for the clients. Uh, we see the project that uh, uh, I, uh, I was uh, leading back in Latvia, uh, Amber Linux. Uh, and uh, the, base, uh, the, uh, the aim of such a distribution is uh, actually not to make a best distribution. It's, uh, uh, the, one of the aims is uh, to make a distribution that uh, your people that are working here for you know all about. They know all the, uh, the quirks of this, of this distribution. And uh, the second aim is to train your people uh, to know all the quirks. And uh, in, uh, when you have this commercial-based distribution completed, you have not only a base to, to provide your services off, you have also the people that are actually able to change anything in your distribution to fit your needs. And uh, as, we, as we see many uh, reasons to make uh, custom Debian distributions, uh, we see a reason to make uh, that simpler. And that's uh, where uh, uh, custom Debian distribution framework comes in. Uh, the basic idea is to make uh, a software and uh, a set of uh, format definitions that allow you, uh, by creating a few well-defined, uh, maybe simple files, create a, 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 custom, a custom Debian distribution version 
make uh, something uh, that will uh, adjust itself to, to your n uh, needs uh, afterwards when you're installing it. Uh, as uh, this custom Debian distribution uh, is not actually a derivative in the sense that it can exist ex inside Debian, uh, it is actually Debian but with some adjustments. Uh, uh, it, it means uh, it has lo a lot less work to make it and less, le uh, less work to maintain it uh, than uh, uh, a distribution on its own. Uh, so basically, this framework provides you with, uh, with all the features that usually uh, derivative distributions use. Uh, you can uh, make a selection of packages you want to install. For example, you want... Uh, the Apache server to be installed by default, and uh, you don't want any graphical uh, interface installed. Well, that's one of the selection, uh, selection possibilities. Uh, you adjust configuration of packages. You make some other defaults that uh, do not make sense, uh, that make sense in, in your specific purpose. Uh, you overwrite some files, maybe. Uh, some, some packages you recompile, maybe with some patches applied to them, and uh, some other packages you add, which are not in Debian, which is quite rare, but sometimes you need that. And uh, after, after that, you can, you can get a lot, uh, a lot of derivatives with very little, little effort. What I see the future of this derivatives and custom Debian distributions basically is, I see that... Uh, uh, there'll be less and less actual uh, derivation from Debian. Because it's less a work to maintain something that is uh, basically a small description of a change than to maintain a couple of hundred packages and uh, CDs and servers to maintain it, to do it in backtracking systems and whatever. Uh, the less you make, uh, the less uh, you have to work to maintain it. And we're lazy people, as you know. Uh, you have more uh, comfort comfortability uh, gains because uh, if you, for example, use uh, uh, your uh, derivative audio distribution and uh, at one moment you need to install a web server, you most probably will be able to just install a prepackaged web server from Debian directly and you will not have uh, to do anything to do that. You have just compatib you have compatibility with Debian. Uh, you will not have uh, to retrain uh, your uh, system administrators or users because uh, it's well, it's it's basically Debian. You can describe the changes on a couple of a couple of sheets of paper, and that's all retraining they'll they'll need. And you will be able to uh, yourself as uh, as a Deb uh, Debian derivative be able to be a base for other derivatives uh, that will somehow. Uh, make your derivation more precise uh, for their needs. And uh, they, uh, they will contribute back to you making your uh, custom Debian distribution better, and you will contribute back to Debian making Debian better. Uh, more contribution back to base is uh, what I see uh, uh, a future for all, all derivatives and custom Debian distributions because uh, the more uh, improvement, uh, you have a lot of improvements in your derivatives, and uh, the more of these improvements you get back into the base Debian, uh, the less improvements you have to support yourself. Again, laziness, driver for innovation. Uh, and of course I see that uh, uh, as future goes, uh, Custom Debian distributions will be easier to create, maintain, and uh, easier to use, install, and upgrade, and whatever. Uh, and what other thing? Uh, if there is a purpose, there will probably be a custom Debian distribution realizing that purpose, a tool fitted for that. Uh, so to summarize all, all, that, all that stuff, there are hundreds hundreds of Debian derivatives. They're customized for a purpose. Usually they're the best tools for that purpose. Uh, they base on Debian and add their own benefits. 
uh, the more time goes, the more they'll be integrated back into Debian and will concentrate on the strength, uh, becoming better and better and better and easier. And soon, well, even you and even I uh, will be able to make a custom derivative, uh, custom Debian distribution with little effort. Well, thank you. So, are there any, any questions? Actually, I have a question. Do you think... Uh, please take the mic. Take the mic. You're close. <laughs> uh, people might be interested in knowing, um, is it a good idea, if you're new to Debian, should you start with the basic Debian or you should start with one of the supposedly more easy-to-use derivatives? Mm -hmm. uh, I think... Okay. Uh, the question is uh, whether if you are new to Debian, if you should uh, uh, try to use Debian or one of the derivative distributions. Uh, I think that uh, if, uh, if you have a special purpose in mind, for example, working on a desktop only, uh, for example, if you're a secretary, and uh, absolutely not in... Uh, for any kind of a software development, then probably you should uh, use one of the custom Debian distributions that are optimized for desktop use. Uh, maybe afterwards uh, you would uh, be interested in contributing back to Debian, and then you would be also interesting to see more, uh, more flexible base Debian system. Uh, but for a, a very simple uh, beginner, uh, it could be more preferable to use a, a, a custom version. Okay, are there any more questions? Yeah. Yeah. So the question was basically that from the Ubuntu point of view, is there anything that Ubuntu can do to help Debian make it easier to have custom distributions? Uh, yeah, I think that would be very, very preferable if uh, Ubuntu would uh, somehow join uh, the effort of creating uh, the CD uh, uh, custom Debian uh, distribution framework, so that uh, in the end uh, the Ubuntu can actually become a custom Debian distribution and not uh, invent uh, the the, tool, the basic tools for themselves. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, my question it has to do with an issue that uh, has been brought to my attention uh, from a few perspectives recently, and that, uh, as, as, as some of us know, we've had some issues that we've been coping with uh, trying to come up with a better trademark license for the Debian logo and for the Debian mark itself. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the concerns that has been expressed to me is that there are many Debian derivatives that uh, don't wear their Debian identity on their sleeve, more or less. And it might be advantageous if we had ways to encourage derivative, uh, derivatives of Debian to um, promote the Debian brand, if you will, uh, more prominently, so that people know this comes from Debian, that Debian is ultimately the base, and, if, uh, and that the community that they can contribute to is not limited to their custom distribution, but they can also contribute directly to the Debian project. And uh, it, my, my question is, is, is an open-ended one in that I'm wondering what you think and what other people here think about uh, ways that we can uh, encourage derivative distributions to, uh, to push the Debian brand, the Debian label, uh, the Debian name and to help people understand that uh, one reason that the, their derivative distribution is so great is because it is based on Debian. Uh, yeah, that's a very hard question. Uh, You'll know, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to emphasize, though, you'll notice that, that having that is a little bit in tension with having a strict trademark license on the Debian mark and logo, because the more you tighten that down, the harder it is for people to legally comply with our requirements, and the more just and, and the more we actually 
discourage people mm -hmm. from playing up their Debian identity. I, I don't know how many people here are familiar with what's going on uh, recently with the Linux Mark Institute, but I think there, there's probably something we can learn from that as, uh, as the Linux Mark Institute feels its way through the waters of, of telling people how they can use the Linux Mark. Uh, there's, we're going to want to watch that and keep an eye on it because there's a balance to be struck between protecting your mark and basically having people route around your name and not mention you and erase you from the history books because uh, your name is too hard to use. So, sorry. No. Um, actually, as uh, my, my opinion is that as with uh, any other uh, intellectual property, uh, uh, in the case of free software, the less protection you have, the better. And uh, I think that uh, uh, all the free software-related trademarks uh, should be put for open use and only be uh, restricted in special cases, like if there comes up, a, I don't know, a porno site calling itself Debian Chicks, maybe that would be a case. <laughs> well, maybe. But uh, I think that should be uh, decided on an individual basis there. Yes, please. Well, my name is Andreas Tillem. I'm the, the author of this uh, CDD toolkit uh, in Debian. And I just want to tell a small story. Last week, I've got a mail. Um, CDD toolkit is not able to upload to FTP master. And uh, um, shortly after this, I've got a mail, sorry, from the, uh, the man who, who had set up an external set uh, of, of Debian packages and he is just using it and backporting it to Sarge and I, I just asked him why, why are you using it and so he said well I have a little um, I'm a laboratory for teachers and we are just using it what, what you did and so uh, the, what I learned is people are using the techniques we invented even if they are crappy, I'm, I can say it, I'm the author. It's, it is crap and it is rewritten. Uh, Sergio Talens Oyak is, is rewriting the CDD toolkit. And so my, my answer to the people from Ubuntu is just uh, join this effort, uh, which is currently done to rewrite what was just a very little and small tool and make it better so that it works for all people and not only for, for the small purpose we have currently because people are using it and they are using it without our knowledge. So I think it is good and we have to learn it that our users are wanting these tools. Thank you, Andreas, and thank you, Igars.